Have you ever seen a movie where the location or setting was the most memorable part of the whole movie? In this video, we're going to be talking about how to maximize the storytelling potential of the location or settings in your films. So I'm in New York, if you couldn't tell. Flat iron building. The other goal of this video is to see if I can not get my phone stolen doing cool intros like this. If you're maximizing your film's location, you're able to add drama, depth, specificity, texture, mood, all of these things into your storytelling. If you don't highlight your film's location, you're just leaving storytelling cash on the table. That wasted opportunity, I've seen it in my own films, I've seen it in major Hollywood films all the time. So I'm here in New York City for a few days, figured I'd use it as an opportunity to highlight use of location and storytelling. But you don't have to be in a big flashy city like New York. I'm gonna give you a few examples of the most seemingly boring, plain locations that have been used so well to advance the storytelling in different movies. However, being in probably the most iconic filmmaking city in the world, I figure, let's just start here. Pot of fake gold chain, three bucks. Pot of nice coffee and a banana too. That's what you do in vlogs, I guess. So they say to write what you know. And the reason for that is you want to play to your strengths whenever possible. And believe it or not, your life experiences and your unique perspective on life are a strength depending on what story you're trying to tell and of course where that story takes place. Now for me, I'm no native New Yorker, obviously. I'm just a guy from Virginia that's coming in here for a few days and wandering around. But if I was going to tell a certain kind of story in New York, that could be a strength or a weakness. Um, if I was going to be telling a story about a drug addict from Queens and his journey through addiction, I would probably be a little out of my depth for showing off the city, the places that I would set my scenes, the way that I would try to use the city to tell the story would be a lot weaker than they would for somebody with those life experiences from New York. On the other hand, if I was telling the story of a guy from a small town coming to the big city and being overwhelmed, then I think I would actually be right in my element. I think I'd be able to pick out the right locations to get my ideas across, focus on the right details of the city, the things that pop out to me they would be more appropriate for that story. So simple stuff, again, play to your strengths, avoid your weaknesses. If I skip this rock three times, you gotta subscribe. That was two. You can subscribe anyway. Well, yeah, you wanna scare those ducks real quick? No. <laughs> All right, we're picking up the rest of this tomorrow. It's tomorrow. So making my way to the World Trade Center Memorial, I've never been, and tomorrow's actually the 20th anniversary of 9-11. But along the way, I'm gonna be stopping and talking about some good examples of using setting in a film. Bought another coffee, finished the coffee. Of course, if you wanna talk New York in a film and how to use it right, for me, it's always gonna be Taxi Driver. The parts of the city that Scorsese showed and focused on were the parts that were telling the story, the parts that were seedy, grimy, crime-ridden, violent, all the things that would trigger our main character, Travis Bickle's PTSD from the war. Travis Bickle's described in the film as a walking contradiction, and I think he shows the city in that same way. At times, it's, it's super violent and scary and full of crime, and on the other hand, sometimes it's in perfect harmony and it's beautiful, and Travis goes through the same thing. When Travis gets infatuated with the woman, Woman from the political campaign, everything in the city is beautiful and flowing and full of light. But on the other hand, it can look like this. Scorsese and the writer Paul Schrader used their strengths of their knowledge of the city to show off the characters' alienation, paranoia, and isolation in a really effective way and use it as an extra character in the film to reflect what the character is going through. Now, you watch Taxi Driver now, you can't imagine that film taking place in any other setting. And to me, that's a great use of storytelling with your setting. Well, unfortunately, I couldn't get that close to the 9-11 memorial because they had roped everything off for security, which kind of makes sense, but do a little something here instead. Of course, you'll need a big flash of city like New York if you're trying to use your setting to advance your storytelling. If you take a film like Shotgun Stories, it took rural Arkansas, which you think of as being, you know, flat, boring, plain, and not only did they make the landscape completely beautiful in the film, but they used it to reflect the characters. The characters in that film are all super dry, quiet, reserved people, but there's a lot going on under the surface. But my $6,000 feature, Bad is Bad, 
we really wanted to showcase our boring suburb in Richmond, Virginia as a character in the film. The heat of the summer, the, the cicadas, the way things like local Little League teams dominate the conversation of the dads. If I was making that film again, I'd go much further and I would make sure to cast actors that could really accurately portray the kinds of people that we grew up with in that area. But, you know, $6,000 movie in Virginia, there's only so many resources that we had access to. Of course, you compare That Is Bad to another film project we did, Will the Machine, also takes place in Richmond, Virginia, but we use it in a very different way to tell a very different story. So instead of taking place in the summer, like That Is Bad, it takes place in the winter, because Will the Machine is telling a story about somebody whose internal world is very cold and lifeless. We also didn't have it take place in the safe, quiet suburbs. We had it take place in the city of Richmond which is much more historic in Richmond's history as the former capital of the Confederacy played a thematic role in that film. So the parts of the city that we chose to focus on for Wilder Machine very different from what we chose to focus on with Bad as Bad because we're telling a different story. That's the end of the trip. I'm back here in Los Angeles. I wanted to talk real quick about Los Angeles as a setting in films. I've lived here for almost 12 years and I still don't feel fully comfortable having my stories lean on this setting. The reason being, I feel that you have to take your audience to a new world when you're making a film. But when you're in a place like Los Angeles, it's been done to death and approached from so many different angles in so many films. How do you do that? Well, the only options left to you are to show the city in a unique perspective or to focus on a specific niche or area of the city that hasn't been seen in films as much. That said, I'm not particularly inspired to have films take place out here just because there are huge swaths of land in the US alone that have barely been represented in films or only have had the surface scratched of what's going on there. And the older I get, the more fascinating I find those unexplored regions to have my stories take place in. So to summarize everything in this video about how to use setting to advance your narrative, First of all, play to your strengths. Write about a location that you know very well and can provide a unique insight to. Use your setting to reflect your character's conflicts or inner world. Use your setting to reflect the themes or ideas in your film. And lastly, show your audience a world they've never seen before, even if they've already seen it a million times before, by showing it through a unique perspective or by focusing on an area that hasn't been seen as much. Click here for more filmmaking advice and also drop a comment. Let me know what you thought of this week's format. I know I mixed it up a lot. This video was kind of spur of the moment while I was out there in New York. And don't forget to subscribe. It really helps this little channel grow. And I'll see y'all next week with more. I got a soft serve.